Uh, Tribe of Men is actually one of my favorite channels. Now, I don't know whether these two are brother, sister, whether they're a fiance, whatever, trying to get things straight. But something that happens when you're, when you pretty much try to talk about the issues of men is that you oftentimes become a social martyr. Because uh, you get destroyed socially because we don't talk about or we're not really supposed to talk about things that men go through unless it can kind of be controlled. Something that I've noticed is that you being a complete human being matters less in comparison to whether you can be utilized when it comes to the open market and things of that nature. But relationships are not supposed to be based upon the open market. They're supposed to be based upon who you are. So again, I understand for any men who talk about these subjects, it is harder because relationships are less about intimacy more today and more about what do you bring, what do you have, and what you can sustain a woman until she gets to the next guy she wants. That's it. I mean, you have to have so much in order to have a relationship that it's not even, it doesn't even make any sense. But more into it, just gonna go ahead and react. Hey, look at me and how nice I look. Then if a guy hits on you, it's toxic. Wait. Here we go. If you're willing to accept that double standard because it benefits your career and your finances, Seven you take it also with you, you don't. You can't say, "Look at me and how nice I look." And then if a guy hits on you, it's toxic masculinity. <laughs> Which one is? They can't have both. Depends on what he looks like. I think there's a. <laughs> that's a fact. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. <laughs> literally a fact and this is one of the talking points that now that it's, it's been caught up and accepted uh, a lot of men have stopped again trying to date but you know they're kind of pulling out of that you know this is why roe v wade is getting overturned because a lot of people who are they measure the economy of america like the weather they see that things are going to change this isn't me just pulling this out of my butt Again, a lot of men, a lot of men I went to high school with, uh, a lot of things are realizing that investing into a relationship is pointless because it only works if you look good. And things like Tinder, Bumble, all, they, all they've all they done is blown up what was the toxic nature of most females. Because look, men have their own toxic nature and women have their own toxic nature. And what is toxicity? And I've said this before, toxicity is an overabundance of what you don't need. You know, you can eat too much, too much, you can eat too many vitamins and that can become toxic to your system. It is too much in abundance without balance, without uh, temperance. So anything without those checks and balances can become toxic. No temperance equals toxic. It, it's that simple. But yeah, it's toxic when he's ugly and he looks like a hunchback. It is toxic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a panty dropper if he's a Brad Pitt. <laughs> then you can come be as toxic as you want. To be. <laughs> Please, daddy, toxic me up. Time and a place to hit on somebody. Um, and if we're talking about workplace, if a lady looks nice, that's not an innuendo to be like, hey, Okay, I'm going to make my own point on that. That doesn't make any sense because not only did my grandparents meet at a workplace, they also work together in different sectors. You know, just because someone's at work does not mean they're not active or doing anything. So that was a dumb point she just made. Let me for couples meet at work. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. The time and the places when women say it's okay for them, but it's always wrong for us. Do you, do you think it's true women often find attractive men cute and romantic when an ugly one doing the exact same thing is creepy? Um, personally, I mean, if it looks... Personally, <laughs> I can't... Uh, she's trying to say wrong skin. I'm going to let them do their talking, but she's trying to say wrong skin. Speak for every woman. I mean... <laughs> Now I can't speak for all women, but just me. I don't know. But earlier, the patriarchy was oppressing all of us. Oh, God. The congruence in logic is immaculate. Like, maybe... And again, this is where I react to the stuff because I am a black pill centralist. I, I do believe in... Uh, 
I, I, I'm a centralist, so and I believe more on data. I don't like propaganda and I call it out on both sides, which is something that's not popular. So it's not popular in the slice because everyone used their propaganda to try to incur more people to believe in what they believe. Uh, and even to news, you know, getting you to believe that emotionally you need to invest in something is how most news works. But What's the difference between a cat call and a compliment? If he's ugly. Respect. Well, I mean, well, how do you define uh, respect when approaching a woman? A compliment is whether they think you're hot enough. Well, it could be the manner on how somebody does it. Like, no, 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 but it is. No, no, I'm a, mm, it, it doesn't matter. And this, again, it's beautiful because now we're getting the other side of it. You know, it's to a point where a lot of the magic was never with the women when it came to a lot of dating, market, money spending. It came to whether men were dumb enough to believe it. But now we got the honest data. If you're a guy and you don't have certain things, and you, you're not doing certain things, and it's pointless for you to even try. That's not ugly. That's not evil. That's just reality. You know, why try when they're going to destroy you and shut you down? And you could risk getting in trouble possibly and for all yeah you know the women who try to say oh that's dumb it, it, well what about the data and statistics that backs that up i'm not being angry about it i'm being like no the data says one thing and you're telling me to contradict the data when even you won't be honest about what you're doing you know we can't only attack men in their nature if we can't be honest about what we do as human beings nature in general we're not having an honest conversation. And that's what I don't like about a lot of this modern women dating stuff of that nature. It's not an honest conversation. They're always trying to get get the good, get this, that, and the other. Trying to get, go for the best and get the best. But it always plays out to the man's... Uh, it, it always hurts the men oftentimes at the end of the day. I like your red lipstick. Or yeah, no, but if that's a homeless person that says that, are you going to take it the same way? Yeah, probably. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm going to start talking and let them go. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, if a homeless guy approached you, she'd be like, get away from me. What are you doing? Calling the cops. No way, dude. <laughs> a homeless guy approached us the other day. <laughs> that was different. But if she's alone getting approached by a guy. Yeah. Oh, I'm not disagreeing. Right. Her reaction would be completely <laughs> different. Instead of like twirling her hair, hi, oh my god, if it's a Brad Pitt looking dude, like what? Uh huh. Thank you, giggling. <laughs> At most, the homeless guy will get like, uh, thanks. Walks faster yes. away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's the common sense. And yeah, there's that's no the difference thing. between a sexual harassment and an accepted advance is just whether or not the woman likes you. I suppose, but to the question that you asked, it is. Are you being respectful when you do it? So if a homeless man Correct. came up to me and he was like, grab her by the, I don't think you can say that on there, but yeah, if, they, if you say that, probably I'd be like, get the, get away from me. But if he was like, wow, you look really nice today, or you look nice, man. Now I'm gonna stop it right there. I actually, even in community college, there was this guy who's faking Tourette's and he went around saying inappropriate things but he knew he could get away with it because of the he met the level of hypergamy and he was actually testing the waters. He went around, he pulled, he pulled an Eric Cartman and he went around actually saying disrespectful things to women and they just let him do it. For me, that was when I kind of realized that this stuff was real, was when this guy was walking around disrespecting women uh, to their face and honestly, and it was because that level of hypergamy was there. Understand, that's how much more important it is to be that guy than it is to even try. Trying is pointless. Putting in effort is, well, dumb. I mean, uh, putting in effort matters when they're looking for support till they get to the guy they want or when they're past their 30s. That's, that's when they want to talk about stuff like that. And it, it's an odd when they're open dating, testing out. And again, I'm not attacking this whole free dating thing. It, it's nothing like that. But when accountability cuts different, it, then we have a different story. And also you have to consider that the bottom line for men 
is that a lot of men who are at the bottom line are it's control because yeah a lot of women control the bottom line there are plenty of men who are sexless and um not in relationships and don't have kids so who controls the bottom line men or women women something like that understand that respect is subjective what you may consider respect it is i may consider to be you may consider one standard respectful and another the women who hit me on my butt they, they thought they were being playful but if I were to do the same thing, we know in the society we live in, that would be not be tolerated. See, it's the double standards that the patriarchy allows women. You can you get to make the rules that suit you when you want to. And men are just saying, look at the hypocrisy of it all. And, it, and yeah. I think that's what this conversation proves. Men have to approach you the right way and it has to be respectful. But you don't have an LED readout on your head that tells us those instructions. We just got to go shoot our shot. And if it goes wrong, then Do you go to jail. What? Then men have a problem on their hands. When one of the women, when a woman does that, no real consequence. Um, that's a very true double standard. <laughs> Boom, mic drop. Let me ask you guys a quick question as well. Do you think that um, pretty privilege exists in our society? And if so, what are the pros and the cons of it? Um. I do think they exist. It, I used to be super, super fat and didn't wear any makeup, which I don't think makeup was, makes you look pretty. Um, but so I saw in my it? life a 70 pound weight change and people treat you 100% different. To the opposite side of that, um, <laughs> I've actually been like this weight my whole life. And what comes with pretty privilege is a lot of jealousy and hatred. So with funny she says that because that comes from other women the jealousy and the hatred yes it does she had definitions here that's uh, such a like subjective term right right like, or, or at least if we change experience? color based off of how it's we like feel maybe that would be good grade level whatever college the jealousy and the hate comes from women other women right women are super catty super clicky and they're very mean you've seen it in like mean girls the movie how women are with one another very they're super competitive i think that is very common women hating on each other i think it comes from this thought that we're even in competition i think ideally we let go of that because every person is so different it's so hard to compare right like ideally you'd be yourself so you wouldn't need to compare yourself to other people but i think it is very common for women to view each other as competition which is unfortunate because what the heck men do it too look when it comes to dating it is 100 percent competition this is why a portion of the manosphere was actually uh talking about and pointing out the hypocrisy in the church and talking about you know marriage and dating through the church i mean while it is an institution understand that when a relationship goes bad the church doesn't say hey let's fix it they'll give you some bs counseling some BS counseling, maybe, hey, you should stay together because spiritual, but they never get to the root of the issues or the situations. And part of that shows in why a lot of relationships, a lot of relationships are no longer facilitated in the church. I didn't say that right, facilitated. But it's not in the church anymore because the church was trying to monetize, just like big market, was trying to monetize marriages without being accountable for when they don't work. You know, you're going to either marry for the community or marry for hypergamy. Once the relationship started being more hypergamy, yeah, hypergamous, the church started saying, uh, cool. So. How is it that we're, you know, trying to gain more respect and band together if we're constantly fighting each other? Those are opposing ideas. Less than men need to learn. One of those ugly truths that as a woman, if you look very 69%. good you can gain a lot of things right so it's kind of and a lot of this beauty or exterior beauty is genetic so you're either born with it or you're not so that's like a biological disad it's worse for men it's worse for men because ugly short little hairy women uh they still get to get up to the market to date and have sex so, so it's, it's way worse so yeah yeah I've, I've kind of seen some women that if easily they were a man they would have uh they would have uh went ahead and pulled themselves off the census a long time ago 
So, yeah. Advantage, so I would understand why a certain level of jealousy would arise if you're not confident in yourself and if you haven't found more value beyond your books within yourself yet. Right. And but that's because we don't do that as human beings for a, well, as a community anymore. Men are an accessory, like a nice purse. So if the hot chick is getting the hot guy with a lot of money, right? And then you're that chick that's not hot. Of course, you're gonna be like jealous. No fault hey. of your own. <laughs> right? Exactly. No fault of your own. She's genetic. You oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But person. you know, the ugly chick still be trying to throw, shoot a shot and trying to use that's sex. And that makes people oh, bitter. Should. Yeah, that's the ugly chick. Oh yeah, no, you better sense. not. Not an ad. They are really trying to push for traveling now. They are really trying to push for it. People need to spend money, I guess. I, I, that's what they're hoping for. That you just have to, I don't know, I'd say just um, consider yourself just a human. So why do you think there's so much talk in our society about things like male privilege and white, male privilege and white privilege, but we don't talk about beauty privilege? I'm in sales, and people tell me all the time that I am the best. I'm the best in the company that I used to work for because I had pretty privilege. And it's not. It's act, treating them like a human being and doing your job right and taking into consideration what they're saying and actively listening to them. That's part of it. That is part of it, and that's part of a skill set. But here's the thing that when it comes to human interactions, and I think they're going to talk about this, you still have to get up to bat. You still have to get up to play. And oftentimes what, what people are going to consider when, when it comes to get up to play, it's not your skill set. Because let's be honest here, any human being could learn any skill set given time and even, even with a, a handicap, that can happen. So she's talking about skill set, but why is she even up to bat? So her example kind of falls apart. So people can assume that you have pretty privilege, but do you do the same things that I do? And do you talk to people the same way I talk to people? Also, how does she get a chance to acquire those skills if people were will, were willing to give her the time of day in the first place? Okay, reverse that. But if you do not have uh, something that people want to build on in the first place, the, it's 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 less likely that you're going to be able to get those skills because she's talking about social skills and it's tricky because women can have great social skills and they can have horrible social skills and they can still function the same kind of in society because like no one's checking on whether a woman actually has good social skills uh, until she starts hurting the company and their profits, then they're like, uh, but oftentimes I've seen it where there are women with bad social skills. I'm like, wow. People are just having sex with you, aren't they? Like that's what immediately goes to my head because it's like, how do you get this far in life without having good social skills? Because it's something that even I had to learn and I don't, I don't really like talking to people. I'm actually an introvert, but. Right, we'll she just said know. she just said I had pretty privilege. Mm -hmm. I was the prettiest in the company or whatever. Right. So which is but it? All of a sudden I talk different now. Which is it? Right? Like <laughs> if it benefits me, no, it's all me. It's all my skills. Mm -hmm. But come on. I want to ask a question also about compliments. Also, if you receive a compliment from a man and a woman, does it have different meaning to you if it's the exact same compliment? Yes. Yes. So isn't there a double standard there as well? Oh, Women are better because they're most likely trying not to sleep with you. <laughs> they're just genuinely. So, so what the heck? I have lived long enough to know that lesbians oftentimes play that game. And, you know, it's nothing to them. You know, the competition has just worked out better for them when it comes to a lot of this. You know, women let their guard down around other women and they have the tendency to do that. And oftentimes women are more sexually fluid. But the assumption she just made was kind of crazy. Well, if a man's trying to sleep with you, why is that often seen as having the wrong intention? It's not. It, there doesn't mean it's the wrong intention. But if you say it in a 
I don't know how, in a like gross way. Um, oh, I know. Well, once again, have we established that a guy can do the exact same thing, and it's a, you know, if a guy is attractive, then it's a compliment, and if he's unattractive, then it's harassment. No, no. we actually proved that, or said that yeah. that wouldn't be a thing. It would just depend so, on the so way you came up. So if a homeless guy hit on you, it would have the same meaning as if, you know, a guy who's a, a rock star, celebrity, you know, high status man would. Yeah, you take the compliment the same way. Maybe the reaction wouldn't be the diff would be different. Like, say, if it's a homeless I'm, person. So can I can I I'm gonna challenge that because I think it's it's sort of bullshit. So like, let's say I was walking by you, and I was walking by you, and I said. Listen, you look absolutely beautiful today, and I put my hand on, on 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 your shoulder in order to establish contact. Versus if I did that, versus if someone who you find extremely unattractive did the exact same thing and put his hand on your shoulder in Vegas, you don't think that you would take the way that I did that differently than the way someone that you find unattractive or a homeless person would? We were actually just talking about this on how it's you shouldn't when? be touching anyone. Literally just had this exact conversation that because people are like, have a nice day, don't touch me. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter. But to do that in yes, sales. Be, yes. Like to answer the question, it would be more memorable if it was a homeless person because there's other things that come with that image. Um, and maybe some other mental things. Like you don't know what they're going. So, so okay, so um, so you say so people shouldn't touch. So the thing is, like what I often think is very important for uh, men to do on the first or the second date is to establish like a touch, uh, break the touch barrier, right? So like, you know, when you walk into a door, maybe you put a uh, hand on the small of the back or the or the elbow, right? When you open the chair, you know, when they go to sit down, maybe you put it on the top of their back as a, you know, in order to kind of guide them in. Um, so you say that you have an issue with touch, but oftentimes women find touch, breaking the touch bar barrier very attractive. The confidence of the man comes out in that particular situation. I think that's two different things. If you're on a first day or a second day, I already have allowed, yeah, I've allowed that to happen. And if it is somebody that you meet on the street in Vegas, doesn't matter if it's a very attractive man or a homeless person, don't touch me. Like, so, so I don't know if you remember this, but when we first had the conversation, I did touch you on your elbow when I wanted to say, can we have a conversation about that? Uh oh. <laughs> oh. So there goes the whole. We just went in. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is hilarious. Don't listen to a fish that tries to give you fishing advice. It's that simple. It's against its own nature for survival. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. It said that inspiration. Uh, so the point he made was absolutely 100% correct about the whole fish thing. Now... Oh, I got other videos I need to react to, but just not right now. Um, but getting more to it, I do like sh uh, shows that do give a female's perspective. But something that kind of happens and we can't ignore it is that women are not in, just like men, women are not just in the competition to get with a man. They're oftentimes in competition to get the best. And that's just how it plays out. There's nothing per se bad about it until we get to the accountability and the fallout being negative. That's when it becomes a problem. Because if you're average, it, it actually is more dangerous for you to even try. That's where it becomes more dangerous. That's where it's like, yeah, no, you shouldn't try. You really shouldn't put in the effort. And again, uh, they like the fallout of this. They love the fallout of this until the market starts to reflect that. Because the market's gonna look out for itself first. But more on just this in particular, it is actually pretty uh, strange to see them go back and forth. But channels like this, where they give a perspective of social understanding, I, I do like that. I do like that because, again, they're not trying to bully these women. They're trying to rationalize the dating market. It's not about bullying women. Understand, it's more about understanding. And, you know, if you want us to empathize, but then we can't ask questions, then you have a different problem going on altogether. Because, like, uh, I can be questioned down to the nines. I can be questioned as a man for everything according to. I know that's kind of how they've set it up now, but 
in particular. I gotta come correct. I gotta have this, this, and that if I want to date, be in relationships, and things of that nature. But as an average man, and as most average men are starting to actually learn, it's better for you not to try. It's better for you not to make an attempt. It's better to just stay away from dating. You know, that's for people who meet the level of hypergamy. It's not even for rich people. Because if you have money, you're, you're, you're going to fail, but you're going to fail with more money. I mean, you'll have more chances for failures, but it's it's really pointless it's really pointless and that's what's getting revealed and what's getting shown and that conversation is just catching up but as i said with the roe v way thing it is interesting to see that a lot of the economists and people who are looking out for america's future are starting to shift the rules uh more towards getting more control towards the men because again they can do two things we can give enough and we can not give enough and you see where it's being reflected I, again, I think this is the government playing future economist D20 moves. And I'm not pro or against Roe v. Wade, it's, but seeing how the government's reacting, I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. I'll look what's going to do. Oh, you heard it here first, guys. Go to commercial. Mm.